the organizers uh, for the opportunity to, to be here. So um, I decided to do the, the, the lecture on the blackboard, so we see if it works well or not. And I have a tendency to use a very footnote uh, size font, so if it is the case, do not hesitate to ask me to use a huge font uh, so that you can see. Um, so, uh, title of the presentation of Alexander Bailey. So, the, the talk will be divided in two parts. First, uh, I talk about uh, the rotation of extended bodies. And um, the tidal deformation will be seen uh, in the second part. So, um, the, the problem we're going to... Um, um, maybe I can put the... Uh, yeah. So it will be tidal deformation. So the, the problem we're going to, to study this morning is the following. So you have uh, a body, uh, a rigid body, I will call it B, and uh, is interacting with a point mass M0. And uh, I will um, give the mass M to that body. And so we want to follow the evolution of the rigid body orbiting the point mass M0. So we, we want eventually look at the, the orbit, but also at the uh, orientation of the body. And for that, we have to uh, give a body fixed frame. But in the first part, 
I will consider uh, rigid units. Okay. And uh, for the kinetic energy, uh, so it will depend on what? Uh, so it will depend on the uh, angular uh, velocity of the body. Of course, it will depend also on the linear velocity of uh, M0 around the uh, body of the And uh, because we are in uh, not an inertial frame, there will be an inertial velocity uh, such that it, the kinetic energy we see it depends on so on all time. And so at the end, we end up with the Lagrangian. which will be uh, a function of omega prime uh, with some space, b prime, r prime and eventually f time uh, and so for that problem we have everything we need but uh, in more general case if there is a loser body with a loser orientation we will need the orientation of that body with respect to the inertial fragment, say. And so I will add the rotation matrix uh, giving the orientation of this body with fragment. So in general, we have uh, this dependency of the Lagrangian, which are natural coordinates, I would say. The angular velocity, the rotation, and the velocity position, these are all natural uh, coordinates. We don't want to have other coordinates for the rotation. I mean, these are very uh, natural. And so now that we have this kind of dependency, what are the equations of motion associated with this kind of variable? So to get the equation of motion, so we will use the Euler Lagrange uh, <coughs> equations. So I put an S to to that because usually we say only we, we give only uh, one single equation for the Euler Lagrange, but I will give you two equations basically. So this is for the translation motion. So the, the two other Lagrange equations are the following. So uh, in this set of variables, we will have d over dt, dl over dv prime is equal to dl over d r prime. So this is the, the one usually we call a uh, Lagrange equation, but this is only the dynamical equation. And uh, to that we have to add another equation, which is the kinematical equation given by d over dt or prime equal to v prime. And this will be the kinematic equation. Uh, of course, this one is quite obvious because usually we write the Hamilton uh, Lagrangian in terms of uh, q, q dot, and so this equation is not, uh, is not necessary. But uh, here I would like to emphasize the, that uh, equation because now for the rotation motion we will have to have these two equations also. And so now uh, equations for the rotation. Uh, so I will write the equations and then we will see 
how we can derive these equations. And so uh, I call that uh, point of A because uh, it comes from it's a special case of uh, uh, the very short paper Uh, these two uh, vectors, 
then here you have also um, the, the, the opposite. So you, you change the order of the, of the vectors and the matrix. Maybe you want to define theta? What? You want to define theta. So yeah, I, I will explain uh, now how we derive that, and so it will be clear what is the derivative with respect to theta. So these are the equations of motion that uh, we have to derive now for the rotation. So these are not, uh, I would say, canonical euler Lagrange equation because there is this vector product, but I like this uh, formalism because we are using the natural uh, variable to represent the, the system. So, So let's start with the kinematic equation. <coughs> so to get the kinematic equation, you just uh, take your body. IJK. And uh, you take any point P belonging to So now if you compare 
Um, if you compare what? Uh, so this and this, this two, then you find <coughs> or dot or transpose is equal to omega hat or or dot is equal to omega hat r. So this is the kinematic uh, equation in the inertial frame. And uh, now if you uh, define um, omega is equal to r omega prime, you will have uh, omega hat equal to r omega prime hat r transpose. And if you put that here, you will find uh, the other relation in the uh, body fixed frame in terms of omega prime. Okay, so this is for the kinematic equation. Now uh, we'll uh, look at the dynamical equation. And so in the dynamical equation we will define what is the Uh, is Q 
few symmetric metrics. So it belongs to the Lie algebra associated with uh, SO3. So it's a skew symmetric matrix. And so this is a skew symmetric matrix, and with the hat operator, you can identify it with a vector also. Um, delta, delta prime, uh, which belongs to form 3, right? <coughs> so there is a correspondence between this skew symmetric matrix and a vector of delta theta. And so we will parameterize the, the variation, the, the, the motion on the torsion space uh, by this skew symmetric matrix. And now what we have to, to define is, uh, so here we will have this, uh, so it will be okay, but we have delta omega, and so we have to find the relation between delta omega and delta theta. And for that, we will um, uh, we will write uh, an expression in two different ways, and we will identify the terms. <laughs> so, um, so what we so we want. Um, Uh, the expression of delta omega prime in terms of delta theta um, prime dot and eventually delta theta and whatever. So uh, for that we will uh, compute delta or dot. So there is two ways of the computing that term. We can say that this, that this is delta of r dot. And r dot, uh, we have it here. So uh, we replace, and so we'll have delta or omega prime. So it's delta or omega prime plus or delta omega prime. Uh, and delta r, uh, we know that it's given by this, so we can even replace that, and at the end we get um, r delta theta prime omega prime plus r delta omega prime. So this is one way of computing delta r dot. But there is another way of computing delta r dot, which is taking the derivative of delta r. And if we do that, so we will have the derivative of uh, delta r is of delta theta dot. And so you will get r dot delta theta prime dot plus or delta theta, uh, well, I have too much uh, dots here, like this, and uh, again, or dots, we know its expression, so we can replace, and so we will get or omega hat prime delta theta prime plus or delta theta dot prime. So this is the other way of uh, computing uh, that term. And so now we have two expressions for the same quantity. And uh, this should be valid for any rotation matrix form. And so by identification, we get that uh, delta omega prime <coughs> is uh, delta theta dot prime plus omega prime hat delta theta prime minus this one delta theta prime omega hat prime. So uh, we get uh, this expression and so we can use the commutator to shorten a little bit the expression and we get delta theta prime dot plus Omega prime delta theta hat. Okay, so 
this is the expression of uh, the skew symmetric matrix. But of course, you can uh, use the correspondence with the uh, vectors of R3. And if you uh, do the equivalent, so you will get, so this is equivalent uh, of delta omega prime is equal to delta theta prime dot plus omega prime times delta theta prime. So this is the, the relation between delta omega. So this is the, the relation that we wanted. So this is in the body fixed frame. So as an exercise, you can redo everything in the in the inertial frame. And in the inertial frame, what you will get is uh, delta theta dot plus delta theta <coughs> times omega. So again, you switch the order of the vector product in the inertial frame. So now we have the relation between the velocity, the variation of the velocity, and this uh, delta theta. So delta theta, I don't know exactly what kind of vector it is, but this is just the, um, the parameterization of the tangent vector of the rotation matrix. Uh, okay, now uh, we can put that in the um, variation of the of the action. Uh, so we have 
have this um, variation of the action and so now we will do a uh, usual thing so here we can do an integration by part uh, to write delta s will be dl over d omega prime scalar delta theta prime taken from t0 to t1 plus the integral of t0 to t1 minus d dg dl d omega prime um, scalar delta theta prime and then for the second term we have a uh, mixed product, triple product I don't know the time in, in, in English so we can do a circular permutation of the triple product and so the um, so we will put the delta theta in factor of uh, dl times omega so we will have dl d omega prime times omega prime scalar product delta theta prime and here we have dl d theta prime delta theta prime dt and uh, of course the distraction principle you start from the same point and you end at the same point so here delta theta prime should be zero at t0 and at t1 so this is zero and uh, so this should be true for any delta theta prime so what is in fact of delta theta prime is zero and you end up uh, with the dynamical equation d over dt dl over d omega prime is equal to dl d omega prime times omega prime plus dl over d theta prime I hope I wrote the same equation as I wrote before. Uh, it's not written anymore. Okay, but so this is the dynamical equation in the body fit frame. Of course, you can redo everything in the inertial frame and you will get the other expression where you switch these two vectors. So uh, this is the the, the Poincaré Lagrange equations uh, written uh, for. SO3. And uh, so since we are in the conservative case, uh, we can look at the Hamiltonian. Um, so it would be a Hamiltonian written in non-canonical um, correlates. Delta theta 
right? And so by definition of uh, sigma prime, this comes out, and uh, this will be compared with uh, dH over the uh, sigma prime scalar at delta sigma prime plus dH over d theta prime scalar at delta theta prime. And by identification, we get uh, that uh, omega prime is the h over d sigma prime and uh, the h over d theta prime is minus d l over d theta prime. And uh, now that we have this correspondence, we can rewrite the um, quantum Lagrange equations uh, in terms of uh, the Hamiltonian. So we had uh, d over dt of dl over d omega, which will give, uh, so, so here is the point that we, uh, Hamilton equation, let's say. So, uh, So d over dt, d del over d omega prime is sigma dot. And so it should be equal to d del over d omega prime. So this is sigma prime times omega prime. Omega prime is this one. dh over d sigma prime. And then we should have uh, plus d del over d theta prime. So minus dh over d theta prime. And uh, so this is the dynamical equation and the kinematic equation R dot is equal to uh, R times omega and omega is dH over d sigma hat uh, prime. So we have to convert the vector in terms of uh, matrix. So we can write like that. So this is in the uh, politics frame, but uh, if we write the equations in the inertial frame, because we will need the equations in the inertial frame after. So in F. Uh, so in that case, we will define, uh, so the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to omega won't be the total angular momentum, but just the rotation angular momentum of B. And I will call it P, dL over d omega. So we will see that uh, just in a minute. And then you redo everything, and at the end you end up with uh, pi dot is equal to, so it will be the opposite, uh, dh over d pi times pi minus dh over d theta. And um, r dot is equal to dh over d pi. the equations uh, in the uh, initial frame. Now that we have that, um, we can look at the... So now we have everything, all the formalism, we can apply that to the problem that I should do before, the rotation of a rigid body uh, interacting with a point mass.
the expression of the Lagrangian. So uh, let me recall, so we had uh, this M0 R prime B prime. And uh, so the Lagrangian, uh, so it's T minus U, the kinetic energy is the rotation, the kinetic energy of rotation, which is omega prime scalar matrix uh, I prime omega prime. So here the this is the inertial matrix that is written in the body frame. And you have to add the kinetic energy of translation, which is one half of the reduced mass times the velocity plus omega prime times r squared. So uh, here, beta is the reduced mass. Which means that uh, we have removed the kinetic energy of the barycenter and we are just looking at the uh, kinetic energy in the barycentric frame. And so the, the velocity, so here you have to have the velocity with respect to the inertial frame expressed in the body fixed frame. So it's the velocity plus this term due to the rotation of the frame. And uh, I prime is the inertial matrix. Uh, L minus 
minus m factorial l plus m factorial y ln of r prime y ln of q prime and so when you put that in the expression of u you end up with an expression given by uh, u of r prime is equal to minus j m m0 over r sum over l equals 0 to infinity of r prime over no, r over r prime at the power l plus 1 sum from m equals 0 to l of um, PLM. So I will write it uh, as your physicists do. So then uh, expand the um, circular harmonics into uh, notional associated polynomial uh, that way. And then we define Stokes coefficient CLM cosine of M phi plus SLM the sine of M phi. Where we have used, uh, so we can put primes also here. Um, the uh, spherical coordinates of R prime. So if um, this is R prime, we define theta prime from there, and phi prime is uh, this angle. And our prime is the the length of the of the vector, and so it's usual to write uh, the potential in terms of uh, these uh, spherical uh, coordinates. But it's not very good to use spherical coordinates because they are singular sometimes, and we don't want to integrate angles. So if you don't want to use, use angles as I do, you can uh, come back to the, the expression in terms of uh, spherical harmonics because PLM cosine is a spherical harmonic PLM sine is a, the other spherical harmonic and so if you identify the two expressions you will see that Stokes coefficient or uh, define the properties of the body B uh, so I will just uh, copy the term but you just have to compare this with this where you replace the, the denominator by that expression you compare the two and at the end you get uh, CLM or SLM is uh, 2 minus delta 0 n over on n of L L minus m factorial of L plus m factorial the integral over b of uh, q prime at the power of l plus 2 rho of q prime so you will have this p ln of cosine theta prime uh, sine of m uh, phi prime the cosine uh, of uh, theta prime d q prime, d theta prime, d uh, phi prime and uh, I should not write this like that uh, so I will put this d q prime, d theta prime, d phi prime and here, no, not here oh, so it's a sign here, sorry and uh, here it was a sign, sorry and here we have this sign of m phi prime. So this is the, the expression of the CLM and SLM that depend on the mass distribution of each body. Okay, and um, I will. Uh, so this is the, the, the full expression. I mean, you can uh, expand that uh, for any order or l. But usually in practical. Um, Case, we expand only at the quadruple and at the quadruple means L equal 2 and uh, for the quadruple expansion 
because all primes that have two prime over all prime two plus one half of three times all prime two prime squared over all prime five minus two prime squared over all prime two plus other terms and when you put that in the expression of u you end up with uh, u of r prime and you will get uh, the two point interaction the n equal one will cancel because uh, you will integrate uh, q prime over the volume and so you will get zero and uh, then you get uh, the quadruple term which is minus three half of uh, j m zero i zero i will tell you what's i zero in a minute uh, of prime scalar b prime or prime where b is the matrix I don't know if you notice that uh, in the last two talk of yesterday um, they defined the uh, inertial matrix as the trace uh, one third of the trace of the inertial matrix times the identity minus b So B is the, the, the quadruple of the, the body, and so if you use the quadruple uh, expansion only, you end up with this, which is more easy to move to And um, now uh, it's time to, so now that we have the expression of the Lagrangian, we can look at the equation of motion. Prime 
prime minus 1, sigma prime minus of prime times b prime plus uh, one half of uh, b prime square over beta plus u. And so the equations of motion were um, uh, so we can start uh, yeah, uh, p dot is minus dh over d of y and when you compute that uh, you will get um, so when you derive by that uh, you will get uh, so I will look at my lab to make so that I won't make a mistake so it's p prime times omega prime and then you will have minus du over d r prime and uh, for r prime dot so it's plus dh over db prime and you will get r prime times omega prime plus p prime over beta so this is for the translation motion and for the rotation We'll have a sigma prime dot. Uh, so it's um, the so I should remember it's um, sigma prime times d h over d sigma prime uh, minus d h over d theta prime. But here there is no dependency of the rotation, uh, so this is zero, and uh, we end up just with sigma prime times omega prime. Uh, because here the, 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 we express everything in the body fixed frame, so if we rotate the system, there is no modification of the uh, of the energy, so it's, there is no dependency on the rotation. And so what we just observed uh, here is that so p dot plus omega times p dot uh, p prime is nothing but the derivative of p with respect to the inertial frame and this is equal to the force minus d over the r the derivative of r with respect to the inertial frame so with that is the velocity and the derivative of the total angular momentum in the body fixed frame, so if you put that here, is zero because the total angular momentum is conserved. And uh, now, if you replace um, sigma prime by pi prime plus l prime, you can also compute the equation of pi prime, and you will get pi prime dot, which will be equal to pi prime times omega prime plus the torque where the torque <coughs> is um, r prime times d u over d r prime. So we find that the derivative of the angular momentum of rotation in the inertial frame is the torque, where the torque is given by this. And now if um, you use the expression in terms of spherical harmonics, the good thing is that here you need to compute the gradient hand of spherical harmonics, so we have textbooks for that, the textbooks correlation for that. And here, what's this operator? It's the angular momentum operator. So, um, L equal R times D over D R is nothing but the angular momentum. Operator. So we have also a technical formula to compute uh, the expression of all L uh, applied to a spherical harmonics. So it's very efficient um, to do that. Um, where are my notes here? And uh, sorry. The then um, I would like uh, still. Finish the, the rotation by looking at uh, the 
nobody is explained. Just also for you to, to see how we compute the derivative with respect to, to theta. So, equations in F. Because afterwards, we will look at the rotation motion, assuming that there will be this criteria, let's say. So, the, we know the, the expression of R in the inertial frame, but in the body fixed frame, we don't know its expression. It's not a function of time because there is this rotation. So, well, um, so it's important to have that in the uh, inertial frame, assuming that R of T is a not function of time. Uh, actually, it could be not even Keplerian because if, they, if it's a body in a multi-satellite multi system or a multi planet system, then R of T would be there would be some uh, precession and so on. So, but let's say that it's a non function of time. So in that case, the diversion would be one half of omega scalar i omega uh, minus u of um, the rotation matrix now and um, and t because of the position of R of t and uh, here i is R i prime i R of course uh, and so the, the, there is the rotation matrix hidden in the inertial uh, matrix here and um, so let's uh, uh, use the Hamiltonian. So now pi is just the angular momentum of rotation of the body, and uh, the Hamiltonian is uh, one half of pi scalar i minus one pi plus u of r and t. And uh, now uh, the equation of motion. So the equation of motion P dot is um, D H over D P times P minus D H over D theta. And so now we have a dependency on the rotation matrix. So we will see for the first time how we compute the derivative with respect to theta. So uh, here the kinetic energy is a vector times the rotating matrix times a vector. So um, let x a uh, fixed vector and the matrix A equal R A prime or transpose. And um, F is X times A X. So how do we compute the derivative with respect to theta of that kind of expression? So we just compute the variation of F. The variation of F is, so A is this, so we take the variation of this. So we will get D or A prime or transpose plus or a prime delta or transpose times x and uh, now we replace delta r by uh, delta theta r a prime a transpose plus or a prime so the transpose of that will be uh, R transpose delta theta transpose X. And then, uh, so this is a two-symmetric matrix, so this is minus delta theta hat. And um, so we can uh, recognize A and A. So, um, we can uh, shorten the expression like this. So it will be delta theta A X. So B 
basically when you derive the uh, matrix A that is rotating, uh, and you take the variation of A, you get beta theta times A. This is a common thing that you get when you rotate a matrix. But now what we want is dA for value theta. So we will have to put the d theta in factor. So I come back here and I said that df. So now um, I remember that delta theta a is the vector product of delta theta times the vector that is be uh, after. So it's kind of delta theta times a x plus x or minus x. Uh, so here I will put a here, so it will be a transpose x scalar product with delta theta x delta theta times x and uh, so I want to put uh, delta theta in factor so it will be delta theta scalar a x times x minus or plus and I will don't put a circular permutation, but a not circular permutation, and I will get uh, delta theta times a transpose x times x. And now we have df in terms of d theta times something, and so df over d theta is what is in factor, so it's a plus a transposed x times x and uh, in that case the inertia matrix is symmetric and so uh, if a is symmetric we will get df over <coughs> d theta is 2ax times x which in that case can be written uh, d f over d x times x just in that case but this is to um, to see that in the top we will have d h over d pi times pi minus d h over d theta but d h over d theta would be for the kinetic part just uh, d t over uh, d pi times pi and so at the end the derivative of the kinetic energy cancels out and uh, we get pi dot is uh, just minus du over d theta and this is the spin operator so if you have the potential in terms of circular harmonics so you know how to compute the, the spin operator on the circular harmonics Okay, uh, so I think that we are done with, uh, and of course, yeah, uh, you have to add uh, R dot is omega R. So with the rotation of um, rigid bodies, so it's around well, uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so now you know how to compute the, the equations of motion of a rigid body in the body fixed frame and in the inertial frame. Uh, with that kind of uh, formalism. So um, now I switch to uh, to tides. Uh, so I start from the beginning where tides come from, and uh, I hope I be able to say all what I want to say about tides. We'll see. Take some time to correct a little bit, yeah. So, uh, second part. Tidal deformation. So, uh, I'll start with some, an introduction about that. Uh, so,
So uh, the tides uh, is due to the fact that bodies are perfectly rigid and they can uh, be deformed, they, they, they are deformable. And um, so the, the, the first who computed the deformation of a body if you impose a surfacic force or a volumic force or anything uh, is date uh, back to Lame. So if you consider a body where the material, so if you take a little piece of, uh, of the body and you look what's inside, you will see a material that behaves, so let's say it's elastic for the moment. So you will have this, um, so this relation between the strain tensor and the stress tensor. Um, so you will have the stress and the strain. The strain is the elongation, the stress is basically the force. And in that case, we will have the relation sigma is mu epsilon. So the force is proportional to the elongation. So this is a spring. And uh, the first we computed the deformation of a body due to a uh, force acting up like that. Our uh, Lame, Gabriel Lame, in 1854. And then Thompson, <coughs> uh, not, not Kelvin, after, yeah, in uh, 1863. So then, the, the, at least Thompson was uh, thinking about the Earth and uh, asking himself what is the rigidity of the Earth and so he computed that and he get the expression of what should be the deformation of the Earth if we impose uh, some force uh, on uh, the Earth. But then uh, Darwin, uh, not Charles, but Jean, Jean Darwin, uh, talked with uh, Geophysicist and uh, the geophysicist says no, the Earth is not elastic. Uh, every material within the Earth, um, if, if you look, uh, it would be more like a viscous uh, damper. So the material, if you take any piece of uh, anything and you let it uh, rest, it will flow at some point because it's viscous. The Earth is viscous, and in that case, the stress is related to the strain by the derivative. And so, uh, Darwin, uh, it was in. Uh, uh, I have to remove it. Okay, so um, Darwin in 1878. So, he looked at the viscous. Uh, case, but uh, since the formalism was exactly the same as the uh, elastic case, he also has the um, uh, viscoelastic uh, Maxwell. But so in I both uh, Darwin in uh, eighteen. 78. So basically, we have all the, the equation that we need uh, back from that time. Okay, uh, so they have a huge expression and so on. And then uh, Love, Mr. Love came into the, the field and he gave Love numbers. To, to simplify a little bit the, the way we, we deal with this kind of problem. Thank you. 
potential of the force that will be exerted on uh, that body, you, you will end up with uh, things like this. So these are the equipotential. potential. So basically, uh, so the and the lines here. Uh, so you have um, here it's uh, about 55 degrees. Um, so this uh, on these lines uh, the potential is zero, and uh, this is because um, this is the relative acceleration. Uh, from the center to a point anywhere in the planet. So if you are in the center, the relative acceleration is zero. And as, as you go further and further from the center, you will have a differential acceleration. And so this are the equipotential. And uh, so uh, this is positive and this is negative, this is zero. And so basically, uh, if you take a marble, it will fall down like this and this. And so it will tend to deform the body so that it will uh, squeeze here and inflate in that direction. So that's for our purpose, that is not easy. So basically, uh, this equipotential of given by r squared p2 of cosine theta is equal to constant. Where theta is, um, so when you take any point p, you will have theta and r. So if you uh, put this equal constant, you will get this uh, equipotential. So this is the external potential that perturbs the body, and because of this uh, stress, the body wants to be deformed. So I will call this external potential uh, And then because of this potential, so you have M0, the, the sphere, and because of the potential, uh, of this potential, the body will be deformed. Like this. And because of the deformation, the potential of that body won't be the potential of a sphere, it will be the potential of an ellipsoid. And the potential of an ellipsoid is also, uh, I have to. So the potential of an ellipsoid is something like this. So this is the Lejeune polynomial 
and this is proportional to P2 of cosine theta. So they are proportional at a given radius. And so love, um, say that for the quantum ball, uh, you will have um, V prime at uh, the surface. Uh, v prime of uh, T, let's say, is equal to K2 of the value uh, at the surface. And so this is uh, the law of number. So basically, the response is proportional to the perturbing potential. So the, the name law of number is a little bit ambiguous because actually, the shape, so this is related to the shape of the body, right? The shape at a given time t does not depend only on the perturbing uh, potential at the same time t because it has some delay to, to be deformed. And so actually v depends on w at time t but also at the, on w in the past. And so uh, basically we should more write like this, so this is an integral of uh, k2 of t minus t prime, the value of t prime, dt prime, where you go from minus infinity to t. So it depends on the perturbing potential from time t equal to minus infinity to the present time t. And um, the, you should have a loss number for each time delay between the perturbation and uh, the actual shape, right? So this will um, give the memory of the body, so it will remember well uh, the value of the in the given uh, in the past if k2 of that uh, time delay is big, and if the k2 is small, is, uh, small then it does not remember anything of the value. This is the idea. And you see that this is a convolution actually. So, log numbers are more operators that can be seen as a convolution. So, V prime of T is the convolution of uh, K2 with uh, W. So, it's a convolution. And so, we can see that as an operator. And uh, so, uh, I don't know if you did some uh, electronics, uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah? It's key that depends on time too, on the difference of the... Uh, the key depends on the difference, so it's a function of time that depends on the difference of time. Yeah. Uh, so, when you have an input, the value, and then uh, you have a transfer function, k2, and you end up with uh, the output v prime of t. So this is an open loop transfer function, or those of you who did some uh, electronics, so this is a uh, kind of uh, neutral. And so what is k2? k2 is uh, related to the biology, right? So if you put an elastic body or a viscous body or anything, uh, here you will have something different. The, the, so the, the shape will depend on the relogy of the body. But now what happens if you put a viscous body, so it's a liquid with some friction. If you stress a liquid, the liquid will deform, 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 and it will never stop. So at the end you will have a very flat planet. So what uh, prevents the planet to be deformed continuously is gravity. Gravity gives a feedback. So if you tend to deform too much, gravity will produce a negative feedback that will prevent the, the body to, to be deformed. So let's take a, an example of uh, how we deal with that. So, uh, so if you take an elastic body, 
So uh, without um, without gravity, just biology. So uh, just elasticity. How many? Uh, there's only one. Uh, so the K2 elastic would be um, 3 25th of rho j r over mu. So mu is the rigidity. So you will have this if you have only elasticity. If you have only rigidity, the love number, uh, but if you have only sorry, sorry, gravity. You will have uh, a fluid body just uh, feeling the gravity, you will have three half. And uh, so now, if you use this, uh, I don't know if it will help you, but uh, for me, it was something that uh, when I saw the expression of the love number, I immediately thought about this kind of thing. So now, if you uh, reduce this, so you will have the input, uh, and then the elasticity would uh, be the k to elasticity, and then you will have the output, and then uh, the feedback of the gravity, like this over here. Since it's um, the product of V times this, so this is the 1 over K2 instead of just K2. And so if you do that, you will have V prime of T, which will be given by K2 elastic times uh, W of T minus 1 over K2 fluid V prime of T. And if you solve it for v prime, at the end of the day, you end up with v prime of t equal k2 fluid times 1 over 1 plus k2 fluid over k2 elastic uh, w of t. If I didn't do any mistake, this should be the case. Yeah. And uh, if you replace this, uh, you will get you will get the uh, value of t is equal to three half one over one plus twenty five seven mu over four j four. So I'm sorry I didn't explain what is rho j or four. This is the mean density, this is the surface gravity, and the mean radius. Uh, and so this is uh, what we get, and I would say that this is the approximation of so, uh, let's say that this is the K2, the effective K2. And this is the approximation, so this is for our uniform body uh, of Right, yeah, so, and was 2015. And uh, so at the end, we, we end up with this. And this is just an approximation because, uh, as I told you, we learned everything since the 1850s, uh, okay? Uh, and uh, if you take the expression of Johnson, you will get 1 over 1 plus 19 over 2 mu over 4 j r and this is uh, from Thompson uh, I don't remember the date that I gave you before uh, 63 <coughs> so you know we, we know the exact expression since a long time but now we are using an approximation because it's more easy to do to handle than we have the neurology and we have the feedback of the gravity. Um, at the end, the error that you do is very small, so it's very good to use that. And the difference between the two is here, we treat the elasticity alone, but if you have gravity, the deformation of the body won't be uniform because you deform less the center and more the, the surface. 
And so this changed the elastic energy, and so at the end you end up with a 25 instead of a 90. But the expression is very good anyway. And you can even change the K2 elastic so that you match the 90 over time. Um, so this is for an elastic body, yeah. Yeah, you have the mu here. But now, um, so I'm still here. So you, you can use any kind of uh, value tree. So you will have, um, no, uh, so I said elastic solid. Uh, you will have um, viscous fluid. But then, this would be the case if the deformation was instantaneous, 
but the deformation is not instantaneous. Uh, there is some delay, and because of the delay, uh, the the bulge is not aligned with the perturbing mass. So here, uh, so there is a lag. So here I take the case of uh, like the, the Earth and we see the Moon. Because the Earth is rotating faster than the Moon, we see the Moon moving in that direction. And so you have the Moon there and you want to reach the, the Moon, but then the Moon uh, has been displaced the time where you reach the maximum of deformation. And so there is this, uh, this, uh, this line here. And because of this line, you'll have the force uh, like this and the force like this, which will produce um, a torch. So this picture is when the rotation is uh, faster than the wind motion, and uh, you end up with um, a decrease of the angular momentum because you want to decrease the rotation. Here's the rotation. And, uh, but for the orbit, uh, the angular momentum of the orbit will increase. And if it was the opposite, uh, you will have an increase of the rotation uh, of the body and a decrease of the angular momentum of the orbit. So this is the simple uh, idea of um, of uh, McDonald. Uh, so uh, what should I do now? Um, so uh, so this is the I mean the introduction of Tyson. So I have only ten minutes to to finish. Um, so the the additional potential. You remember the the quick potential uh, that I drew is due to the differential acceleration feel by a point in the body. And so uh, the tidal potential. So now we look at the expression of the tidal potential. So we have uh, W of Q prime. Which is given, so I will give you uh, the expression, uh, which expression I'm going to use. Uh, the one that is expanded is regular mix. G N0 over R prime, sum from L equal 2 to infinity. So the fact that it starts at L equal 2 is because you look at the differential acceleration, so it starts at L equal 2. Uh, G prime L over R prime L. Uh, the sum over n equal minus l to l of um, 2 minus delta 0 m l minus n uh, factorial n plus n factorial y um, of r prime y um, of q prime. So at a given position in the body, um, you have this acceleration due to the position of the perturbing body. So uh, when you have the value and uh, the load number, you can compute the um, additional potential. And so the additional potential uh, so it's V prime of uh, R prime and um, so this is the potential of um, deformed body so we already saw the expression of that kind of thing it's minus G M M0 over R uh, so here it's just M because it's the potential of the potential energy um, times uh, L equal uh, so let's say two up to infinity. Uh, so what did we wrote uh, R over R prime L plus one so <coughs> M equal zero to L. P L M cosine theta of C L M uh, cosine M five 
this is the general expression of the potential of a deformed body. You have the potential, the tidal potential, and so at the surface you have the love number, and so you can uh, get V L N at uh, the radius R at time t is equal to K2 overweighted with V L M, so it's a K L here uh, at the radius of time t. So now um, I look at the uh, component of the circular harmonic series and for each order L there is a lot number KL. And so this is a convolution product and of course you can write it in the Fourier space. <coughs> so it's convenient to write it like that. Uh, but usually uh, the K2 can be expanded, uh, can be written as a rational uh, in a rational form. A1 i omega plus uh, B0 plus B1 i omega plus B2 i omega square and so on times W ln omega. So you can write the, the K2 uh, as a ratio of two uh, polynomials in i omega and if you do that and the denominator you put it there you can end up with a differential equation um, a differential equation uh, saying that you will have uh, b0, b uh, prime plus uh, b1 d over dt d ln prime plus and so on equal a0 w ln plus a1 d over dt w ln plus and, so and um, actually instead of v prime and w you can uh, write in terms of the Stokes coefficient CRM and SLM and write everything for each SLM CLM plus B1 D over D T C L M plus and so on is equal to A0 C L M star let's say plus A1 D over D T C L M star plus and so on and so you can write this for the CLM for the SLM where CLM uh, star and SLM star would, would be a function that uh, you get from writing that uh, the identifying the expression of the value with the expression of your I don't have the time to, to write that but you can write uh, CLM uh, star as a function of the position of M0 with respect to the body this is the idea and so now if you put everything together we will have the rotation, the, the equation for the rotation of the rigid body on one side and the tidal equation on the other side and uh, so far they seem quite separate we have the Lagrangian formalism on one side and on the other side we have this thing that uh, we don't know where it comes from but we have this equation of motion and actually we can put everything together in a single Lagrangian formalism and uh, so this is what I will do now. And, uh, um, yeah, up here. So, um,
with any kind of ecology. So I will draw that epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 2 tilde, eta 1, mu 1, mu 2, eta 2. So you will have, so let's say that the microscopic, the, the, yeah, the, the overall biology of the body, so now it's the microscopic one and the small one, is given by that, let's say. Then um, the equation of, so what uh, we can write is the Lagrangian that gives the evolution of that. The Lagrangian would be, so the, so we won't have any mass here, but just the potential is minus one half of mu one epsilon one square plus one half of mu two epsilon two square. So this is the potential energy. So there is two springs. And then you have a dissipation fraction which uh, corresponds to the dissipation in this number. So eta one epsilon one dot square. And uh, here also uh, one half of eta two epsilon two two dot dot square. And then of course you have to say that the overall elongation epsilon is the sum of these three epsilon, and so you will add a uh, Lagrange multiplier like this. So you have the, the Lagrange multiplier imposing that the sum of the displacement is the total displacement. And so if uh, you take the, this Lagrange, this dissipation function, the equations of motion that you get are the following. So d over dt dl over d epsilon i dot is equal to dl over d epsilon i minus d d over d epsilon i dot. And um, dl over d lambda is equal to zero. So these are the equations of motion that you have to take. And if you replace, uh, you will have the, the, the equation of motion. Um, so I won't write them, you can write them. For, for any epsilon, so you have epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and epsilon tilde 2. And you write this equation uh, everywhere. So there is no dependency on the velocity here. So we just have dl over d epsilon is equal to dt over d epsilon dot. And you have this relation that you have to add. And so this is for the world logic. So let's say that the world logic is given by that. Then you will have the association principle, if I'm right. Uh, yeah. Association principle, so it's uh, right that. So and where is 2017? which says that if the body is spherically symmetric, you replace all the epsilon by B matrices, and at the end you end up with uh, minus one half mu one B one uh, square minus one half of mu two B two square plus um, a lambda lambda scala b minus b1 minus b2 <coughs> minus b2 tilde and uh, dissipation fraction one half of eta1 b1 dot so it's here it should be written in the value plus one half of eta2 b tilde uh, two and so if you have uh, this uh, Lagrangian with this equation, then you have the, um, the, the behavior given by the, the biology. And now you can add everything together. 
So to the to the end. Um, so you will you have everything together, and so at the end you will have the lab version, which will be given by uh, one half of. Uh, so let's say that uh, we work in the logistics frame, so it will be easier at that time to do that in the image of frame. Square uh, minus Q, and then you add uh, the thing minus one half mu to b to square plus lambda scalar b minus b one minus b two minus b two tilde. Uh, so this is the homology, and as I said, you have to add the retroaction, the, the feedback of um, the gravity, so let's say that we have a minus, uh, so this would be the gravity, d square. So basically, so this is the protocol approximation. And the, the gravity is uh, like an elastic, like a string. And uh, you have the dissipation function, uh, one half of eta one, B1 dot square plus one half eta two B2 zero dot square. And with that, um, you write uh, the equation of motion that we saw for the rigid case for the homology. So you, you use uh, this kind of equation, and at the end of the day, you have the equation of motion for a deformable body in a uniform. Uh, Do you have any uh, 
significant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end, uh, it seems that uh, you can take any energy that you want. At the end, you will have impact on Mercury. That if you end up in sequence rotation, the impact uh, at the, the origin of the solar system will uh, put out of the sequence rotation, and so at the end, will end up in the trajectory. So it's, it does not depend so much on the analogy, it depends on how much uh, thing that fall onto a mercury in the past. Okay, let's, let's thank this we get again.